Last thing I want to talk about, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I have no clue what your views on Bitcoin are. Uh, positive, negative, yeah, anywhere still, in between? I'm well, still figuring it out. So I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not shy about uh, about spouting off in areas where I think I have expertise, <laughs> uh, which are which are diverse, uh, you know, if I may say so myself. But uh, Bitcoin is not one of them. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm still like a nascent student. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll give you my my impressions. Maybe one of the yeah. things I was hoping to do was to, to learn a little bit from you, even from our from our chat here. So, so I'm favorably disposed, very favorably disposed to the idea of having competition mm-hmm. with central fiat money. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think that competition is going to be good. I didn't think that you would yeah. uh, be against that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, exactly. that doesn't so, so like, surprise but, me. But, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm like quite strongly in favor of, of that proposition. You know, without repeating boring platitudes that, you know, more of your you know, presumably pro-Bitcoin audience is already on board with, like, you know, I could maybe focus on one of the areas of, of limited um, outsider feedback mm-hmm. here that, I think that the Bitcoin proponents, I worry, uh, ask it to do too much. Mm, interesting. Yeah, Why? we've sort of put too much on Bitcoin's shoulders, right? I, I think I think the end of competing with fiat money, sort of that as an end, that as a goal, is a worthy enough goal for what that can accomplish for human flourishing and for economic freedom and for autonomy and for even economic prosperity. And, and keeping, you know, central governments in check with respect to, you know, Federal Reserve in the United States, et cetera, in check with respect to behaviors that otherwise create a, um, you know, I think a, a form of hubris of our own. But I think that, you know, some, sometimes what I hear from from Bitcoiners, is that, is that a term you use? Like yeah, Bitcoiners? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it, is, it's sort of the belief that like when I'm talking about, you know, the, the, the cultural challenges from ESG to challenges in American culture to these victimhood narratives is Bitcoin is the answer. Decentralization is the answer. Yeah, Bitcoin solves this. Bitcoin solves this. And, and, and I think that that's asking too much of a currency. I mean, at the end mm-hmm. of the day, you're we're creating a new form of paper, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a new form of paper that competes with the old forms of paper. But, but you know, gold is still paper. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin is still paper. At the end, maybe you know, maybe maybe you don't agree with that, but I, I think that at the end of the day, these are just different forms of paper that compete with one another. And I think that the idea that that's somehow going to solve challenges that are fundamentally cultural in nature mm-hmm. makes a bit of an error in conflating cultural or normative challenges with technocratic ones. Yeah, and so, I, and I think we got to be careful about that. So, so what's interesting? Um, you're probably talking to the best and worst person about these, okay. uh, because uh, on. Some aspects, uh, I think that my views uh, align uh, and would be completely 100% agreed upon uh, with almost any Bitcoiner you would talk to. So many of the things around decentralization, around competition uh, with fiat centralized currencies, like all all of that stuff, uh, uh, I think I'm in line with and and understand uh, and agree with. The part that uh, I think around Bitcoin solves this what the Bitcoin argument would be is that many of societal problems that we face are all traced back to the corruption of money. So if you basically take a first principles approach, right, uh, the argument would be uh, why is there an obesity problem in America? Well, you can trace it back through the food system, through, you know, corporate greed, through all this stuff. And like you eventually just get to like there's a corruption of money. And like if you solve the corruption of money, then eventually you can solve that problem, right? Yeah. And so, like, I see that argument, yeah. right? And, and uh, uh, I am sympathetic to that argument. I actually, in fact, would uh, like it to be that simple. Yeah, exactly. But, if only it were. But but it, it's a weird thing. And, and where maybe uh, I have views that maybe some Bitcoiners don't agree with is that, like, theoretically, that is true. Mm-hmm. In reality, there's other things. There's additional steps. And maybe this is kind of what you're getting at, which is, like, Yes, a, a first principle solution to that problem is fix the money, right? Mm-hmm. So fix the money, fix the world is kind of the the, the talk. Is that track. the mantra? Got it. Yeah, okay. and 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 for the most part, like actually, like I do think the corruption of money has like immense negative impacts on all sorts of you know crazy parts of society that yeah. don't seem connected, but they are. But Bitcoin alone, I don't think, is enough to solve some of these problems because you need other solutions as well. Right. And, and, and am I wrong or do you get the sense that a lot of Bitcoiners kind of believe it is like it is a little bit of like a panacea to yeah, well, it's, it's just a theoretical uh, uh, it, it's a theoretical belief that if you simply solve the corruption, corruption of, of money, money the, the cascading impact yeah, so, is possible. So, so here's where I am. I believe the corruption of money is the source of a lot of problems. Actually, mm-hmm. my latest book does talk 
extensively about this, mm-hmm. even in the modern American context. However, I don't believe it's responsible for all of our problems. Mm-hmm. And I think that a diff- there's a different problem that I'm focused on, uh, that I focused on in my first book, which is that I also think there's a different problem going on in, in our country, in our modern contemporary culture right now, which is that, you know, how old are you, man? You're 34. 34. Okay, you're younger than I am. I'm 37, right? But we're, we're part of this generation. Old. You're old. Yeah, I know, I'm old. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, 30, uh, late 30s. That's yeah. the difference between late and early 30s. We're both millennial. You're millennial, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's still millennial? Oh, right? yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Millennial and younger is. We are hungry. We're so hungry for a cause. We're all so hungry for purpose mm-hmm. and meaning and identity mm-hmm. and belonging that the kinds of things, and we're, by the way, we're living in a moment where the, the sorts of things that used to fill that hunger for purpose mm-hmm. and meaning and identity, like the F word, faith, mm-hmm. you know, patriotism, national identity, hard work, family, wh- whatever it might have been. I mean, those things are un- un- undoubtedly receding in modern life. Mm-hmm. And so I, my theory of the case is that there's a black hole of identity mm-hmm. in our generation in our American moment. And that's what allows the isms to fill the void. Wokeism, scientism, which is different from science, right? It's a belief, (laughs) unquestioning belief in authority. But, but, but I worry that actually if we miss that reality and just put it all in the corruption of money, and there's other, there's other views I have too, of other fundamental social Mm -hmm. conundrums, one of which is the corruption of money. But, but there are others too, that if we just pin it all to the corruption of money, Bitcoin becomes a newism and Bitcoinism, just like wokeism or scientism or whatever, is going to fill that void of hunger and purpose and meaning and identity and and sense for belonging that is asking too much of a currency. That's not what a currency was supposed to do. Currency is supposed to fix the corruption of money by competing in the marketplaces for currencies. That's all good. I'm like whole hogging on that. But I think that where we where we sometimes you know, I'm saying we as though I'm a, I feel like a newcomer, but but a part of the community anyway. But where we sometimes, um, you know, might might veer a little bit is expecting too much out of it by thinking that that's going to solve problems that are fundamentally normative or moral or cultural in nature, and in the process may actually recreate some of the same cultural failures that led us to that led to the ESG informed world or that led it to the to the the DEI influenced culture or whatever it is yeah. that bitcoinism becomes a new substitute secular religion that the thing we love about it is the fact that it's not a religion it's just a rational path to autonomy yeah, when it comes to relationship of money right and 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 I th- we don't need to and, and, and I see this a little bit here's the other place where I sort of see the evidence of this a little bit is and you totally correct me if I'm wrong, because this is, like yeah. I said, at the beginning of this section, not my world. And so I'm still a new student here. But it seems to me like sometimes the Bitcoiners are trying to play the game in the marketplace of ideas and the debates and the critiques of Bitcoin. Oh, no, no, we're green, too. Oh, oh, oh no, no, we're, we're doing the diversity thing. We have the Bitcoin diversity thing and, and trying too hard to sort of prove to the critics that, no, no, no we're one of the good guys, mm-hmm. when in fact, you should just be yourself. Th- this being is, good th- is being yourself. Th- there's a uh, a splitting, I think, kind of like if, uh, you know, if Bitcoin is the macro idea, there are micro factions. Yeah, uh, as you'd expect, right? Where uh, some people are very much, uh, yes, we are uh, uh, ESG compliant. We are this, we are that, we are, you know, all this hey, look, stuff. look, we're the good guys, you know, exactly. And then I, actually, I think probably the people who uh, are a little bit more hardcore believers, more uh, libertarian in nature, th- those types of things, they're like, we reject your framework. Yeah, we, yeah. we, we, you know, fuck Do you. not impose right? that on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just like, like, consuming energy because, is good. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 I, and by, the, by the way, part of the reason I find this attractive is precisely because it is outside of the centralized yes. Yes. systems yes. that enforce that one religious ideology, and a religion that I don't want to bend the knee to. Yeah. Right, the, so, so, so I'm, I'm kind of there. I, I'm kind of in that camp. And I, and I sort of worry a little bit that the Bitcoin solves everything movement, one of the things that's wrong with it is that it also requires accommodating these other agendas as a way of proving that Bitcoin is compatible with, if not causally linked to solving problems relating to racism or climate change, when in fact that wasn't what Bitcoin was set up to do, it was yeah. set up to solve the corruption of money, solve that, and do that through competition and be yourself, 
rather than pretending to be something you aren't. So that's something that so, so it sounds like I'm not 100 percent off then. And kind you, of you are this. closer okay. than you think. And, and I'll even give you uh, kind of a personal anecdote. So uh, over the last number of years, uh, I was very outspoken uh, about Bitcoin and, and talked about it uh, over and over and over and over again. Uh, and at one point, somebody came to me uh, and was like, hey, um, you don't have Bitcoin in your bio on Twitter. Well, I never thought about that. I never put an asset in my bio before, right? Like, okay, <laughs> it's an asset. Uh, exactly. But but it's not a flag. Uh, but but I really respect the person I was talking yeah. to, and and they were like, you know, uh, you do whatever you want, but like it may be uh, uh, a good thing for the community. Like, you know, people would know that you're into Bitcoin. And I was like, okay, well, that's pretty much all I tweet about. But like, okay, yeah. so put it there, and, and then uh, the whole laser eyes thing started, and uh, kid DM'd me my own photo with laser eyes already on it, and I was like, uh, well, if everyone else is doing it, then like. Sure. Right. Like, like, ah, cool. Whatever's fine. And so this all continued. I took the laser eyes off this year, Bitcoin out of the bio. And I wrote something because when I did it, there was like a concern. Uh Uh-huh. Did, did he, you know, did he leave the religion? I mean, church. Did no, he, no, he no one said it exactly yeah. in those terms, but like there was a little bit of like, did he sell his Bitcoin? Right. Yeah. Did he give up? Does he not believe anymore? Is he not right? a believer? And, right. and, and all this. And so I, I wrote a piece and I just said, listen, uh, you know, aptly titled, uh, um, you know, uh, did I change my mind on Bitcoin? Right. <laughs> just like, let's get right to the heart of the issue. No, uh, actually I have more conviction today than I ever have. Uh, but uh, there was somebody who, who had uh, texted me at one point and he said, uh, why'd you take your laser eyes off? I said, because I couldn't see with them on as a way to basically say, just like, listen, uh, I think I am more valuable in talking about it by being able to walk in and say, I don't have laser eyes. I don't have my identity tied up in this. And this is, this is, this is so funny. It's not unique to Bitcoin. I think it's unique Mm -hmm. to our cultural moment where it is this idea that you have to signal the tribe you're a part of. Bitcoin ought not be a tribe. It ought not be a faith. It ought not be a religion. It ought to be a currency. 